This is the second video on the subject of angels. The first video was about the six types of angels, which I would encourage you to watch before you watch this video. Many people have different beliefs about guardian angels. Is there a single angel assigned to each of us and dedicated to our well-being? Does that angel hover over us continually? If guardian angels do exist, who are they and what is their mission and purpose in our lives? In that first video, I referenced Elder Holland's 2008 conference address entitled The Ministry of Angels. He mentions that angels are sent from God to help us with our challenges throughout this mortality. He said, quote, He sent angels, divine messengers, to bless his children, reassure them that heaven was always very close and that his help was always very near. From the beginning, down through the dispensations, God has used angels and his emissaries to convey love and concern for his children. It would seem that angels are very common, but not always seen. Elder Holland, in that same address, said that usually such beings are not seen. Sometimes they are. But seen or unseen, they are always near. Sometimes their assignments are very grand and have significance for the whole world. Sometimes the messages are more private. Occasionally, the angelic purpose is to warn, but most often it is to comfort, to provide some form of merciful attention, guidance in difficult times. When Elder Holland talks of angels with private messages, or to warn, or to comfort us, I believe in one sense he is talking about guardian angels. The term guardian angel is not used in scriptures. The closest the scriptures come to this concept is in expressions such as, quote, I have given the heavenly hosts and mine angels charge concerning you, and mine angels shall go up before you. In a blessing he pronounced upon Newell K. Whitney in October 1835, the prophet Joseph Smith said that angels shall guard his house and shall guard the lives of his posterity. In June 1844, in a meeting in the 70s Hall in Nauvoo, the prophet related a dream he had had, in which he said, I thought I was riding out on my carriage, and my guardian angel was along with me. Several prophets, other than Joseph Smith, have spoken at length on the reality and mission of guardian angels, including David O. McKay and Harold B. Lee, in addition to many other apostles. But who are these angels? The first video talked about the six types of angels. When we talk about guardian angels to us individual members of the church, more often than not, it is disembodied spirits who once lived on the earth and are now awaiting resurrection, although it could be other types of angels on the other side of the veil. Joseph F. Smith once said, quote, When messengers are sent to minister to the inhabitants of this earth, they are not strangers, but from the ranks of our kindred, friends, and fellow beings and fellow servants. In like manner, our fathers and mothers, brothers, sisters, and friends who have passed away from this earth, having been faithful and worthy to enjoy these rights and privileges, may have a mission given them to visit their relatives and friends upon the earth again, bringing from the divine presence messages of love and warning, or reproof and instruction, to those whom they had learned to love in the flesh. So could guardian angels be those that have passed on that knew us or our ancestors? Well, Doctrine and Covenants 103, verse 5 says, quote, There are no angels who minister to this earth, but those who do belong or have belonged to it. So it seems clear that all angels, and certainly guardian angels, are those that have lived on the earth or will. But do we each have a guardian angel? Many years ago, Elder John A. Widso addressed the question of whether or not each individual has a guardian angel. He said, quote, Undoubtedly, angels often guard us from accidents and harm, from temptation and sin. They may properly be spoken of as guardian angels. Many people have borne and may bear testimony to the guidance and protection that they have received from sources beyond their natural vision. Without the help that we receive from the constant presence of the Holy Spirit and from possibly holy angels, the difficulties of life would be greatly multiplied. The common belief, however, that to every person born into the world is assigned a guardian angel to be with that person constantly is not supported by available evidence. An angel may be a guardian angel, though he come only as a sign to give us special help. In fact, the constant presence of the Holy Spirit would seem to make such a constant angelic companionship unnecessary. 
So until further knowledge is obtained, we may say that angels may be sent to guard us according to our need. But we cannot say with certainty that there is a special guardian angel to be with every person constantly. This seems to make sense as those scriptures referenced earlier used angel in the plural. Angels have charge concerning you and his angel shall go up before you. It seems like at times there can be more than one, not always a single dedicated angel. President Joseph Fielding Smith and Elder Bruce R. McConkie both acknowledged that help may come from ministering angels at critical times in our lives, but that the true guardian angel for each individual on the earth is the power and direction available through the light of Christ and the Holy Ghost. See, as Latter-day Saints, we must understand that constant companionship comes from the Holy Ghost, and then, as needed, angelic help may come. But how do we draw on the power of angels? Are there examples of this in scripture? I think the best example is that of the angel that appears to Alma the Younger and the sons of Mosiah who were secretly attempting to destroy the church. The angel describes exactly what happened for him to show up. In this case, it seems to be that these young men were attempting to thwart God's plan. Many people were praying for God's intervention and they prayed with much faith. He goes on to say that he has come to convince them of the power and the authority of God so that the prayers of his servants might be answered according to their faith. If you are righteous and faithful, and the still small voice isn't enough for the trials you are facing, this is a way to draw on the powers of heaven. So the takeaway should include, one, we each have constant access to a type of guarding influence through the light of Christ and the Holy Ghost. Two, ministering angels are sometimes sent to guide, comfort, protect, and instruct the Lord's servants and other faithful individuals in times of need. Three, angels who minister in our behalf, whether seen or unseen, may include departed loved ones who are aware of our circumstances and are concerned about our welfare. And four, faith is a critical element in the ministry of angels. In that same talk by Elder Holland, he says, quote, My beloved brothers and sisters, I testify of angels, both the heavenly and the mortal kind. In doing so, I am testifying that God never leaves us alone, never leaves us unaided in the challenges that we face. Nor will he, so long as time shall last, or the earth shall stand, or there shall be one man or woman or child upon the face thereof to be saved. On occasions, global or personal, we may feel we are distanced from God, shut out of heaven, lost, alone, in dark and dreary places. Often enough that distress can be of our own making, but even then the Father of us all is watching and assisting. And always there are those angels who come and go all around us, seen and unseen, known and unknown, mortal and immortal. As LDS who believe in angels, we should look for their influence in our lives more and be ready for their guidance and comfort as we need them and are worthy of their help. Thanks for watching.